another interview with a guest reviewer and this is a guest beyond guest this is a friend of mine for over 30 years a uh, young young man <laughs> young man who is now the chief theater critic for citytour.com and before that was the editor in chief of theater mania and and a dozen other magazines and papers that he doesn't want me to even bother mentioning but he was my editor on most of them so hello Brian Scott Lipton welcome to the critic circle Yes. Welcome. And of course, today we will be talking about Trouble in Mind. This is a play Broadway has been waiting for for 66 years. Brian, was it worth the wait? In many ways, yes. I mean, certainly as for those of us who have heard so much about Alice Childress and this play, um, and I have been covering theater for over 30 years, it's sort of been kind of a, if not a holy grail, sort of a, a lost treasure that we in New York have been waiting to see a production for and to see, you know, what, why wouldn't it have gone to Broadway in 1957 when it was originally supposed to? Why did it cause such a stir in 1955? And I do think the production answers those questions in its depiction of Black people here in the acting profession searching to tell their own truth despite all the obstacles they have to overcome. And in terms of pure um, entertainment value or theater lover value, yes, it's worth it for the extraordinary work of this acting company led by the truly, truly incredible Lashans in a way you have never seen her before um, showing off all of her copious gifts as a comedian, as a dramatic actress, even a little bit as a singer, um, and all the wonderful people who surround her. So yes, it is worth waiting for. And it, I am very glad that it has come this season. She gets a few bars in, which is always very nice. The plot of this play is it's, the play itself is set in New York. The play within the play is set in the South. And the black cast is mostly, uh, or actually always is playing servants which was fairly typical at the time. It is a long play. And most of what we see is the director, uh, played by Michael Zegan, trying to whip the play into shape, uh, dealing with a new actress who has to learn the difference between upstage, downstage, right and left, and basically arguing with his cast, how should the play go? And saying, look, I, I could be in Hollywood instead of here. My problem with this play is, again, I, I'm great to see as a historical basis, and ironically, the scene that probably kept it for Broadway is, I, I won't say it's shocking, but it's a well-done dramatic scene, but boy, oh boy, it comes late in the second act, and you have to wait a long time for this playoff. I, I think the first act could very easily have been cut by at least 20 minutes. If it was written in modern times, yes, this might truly be a, a 90 minute play. This play was written in 1955 when it was very, very common. It's actually a three act play, the roundabout, as is often the case, has cut the intermission between the short second and third acts. Um, but it was very common in that era to do these plays that had a great deal of exposition and set up in their first act, you kind of end up at intermission going, well, that was nice, or that was okay, but why am I staying? You'll get your answer if you stay for the second act, right. where it's this wonderful debate, and it's beautifully, it's basically the actors are saying, look, we don't want to play maids anymore, or what my character does is not realistic. Would you do that if you were in a situation? And the director is saying, look, this is what the this is all the audience will accept in this day and age. And ironically, the argument is right because this play took 66 years to get to Broadway. But he's and, saying and, more than that. I mean, the fact of the matter is he has a I mean, spoiler alert, but no, he has a very specific line where he says, yes. I wouldn't do this because I'm white and white pe you know, I'm paraphrasing, white people wouldn't act that way. And that's yes. really the heart of the play. It's beautiful 
beautifully performed by LaShawn and by Michael Zagan, whose performance up until that point seems a little weak to me. Um, mm -hmm. But that's really the crux of it. Right. But, you know, today we take it and I'm seeing the scene well, I think more. Today we, I think today we cheer. I mean, at the performance oh, yeah. I was at, there were people literally talking back to the stage during some of that second act. And, you know, I don't remember if they were going, you go or this, but they were clearly voicing their approval for LaShonza's actions, uh, Willetta, the character. Um, and and I although although up, up until then, a lot of it I felt was, well, she, she, you know, she's an actress who wants to be a playwright. But here, this is, this, is, this is the whole payoff for the play. And I disagree that the play's length is, you know, is a problem because modern audiences don't want a long play. I think it's just too long. I've seen many long plays that I have enjoyed immensely. So the Lehman trilogy, which is a whole hour longer. Lehman is the exception to any rule. Because it's so brilliant. Charles Randolph Wright, not to be confused with Charles Wright, theater critic, uh, directed the play. The other performance that stood out for me was Chuck Cooper as one of the cast members. He has, a, he just he just he says a couple of lines here and there. He he's basically saying his lines in the play within the play, and he does so little, but he can make so much of it. Chuck is an actor who has just enormous presence and always has been, and that has been his stock and trade for all of both, our both figuratively that, and, and literally. Right. But just because of his physical presence, but also his emotional presence, his ability to be there in any scene um, has always made him kind of a secret weapon, which is why we see so much on Broadway. Uh, if we're talking about the cast. I also want to give kudos to Jessica Francis Duke, who plays Millie Willetta's best friend, who's not only hilarious, um, I was really introduced to her when she did the signature production of uh, Lynn Nottage's, by the way, Meet Vera Stark. Um, and I believe, you know, however old she may or may not be, and she looked totally different here. She is oh, definitely yes. a star. You, you would not recognize the, her from Vera Stark. No, I had to look that up. Um, she is definitely a star on the rise. Okay. And in conclusion, our one to five playbill countdown, five being drop everything and see it, one being stay home, how would you rate this play? I rate this play four stars, um, five for LaShawn's, 10 if I could give them, um, maybe balancing out, you know, three on some of the other aspects, but overall, yes, four. Well, I'm certainly glad this play finally made it to Broadway. How any producer could ask that final scene to be taken out is beyond me. That's the scene that makes the play. The problem is the rest of the play really doesn't live up to that. And therefore, I can only give it three stars. I am very thrilled that you were here with us this morning, Brian. I hope you will be back again with us. And um, thank you so much for your time. I would love to. Thank you for having me.